Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. I am Lily with San Antonio Water System, and I am here with Richard, and we are at the desal plant, or you know, what it's turning into our desal plant here in South Bear County. So today we are once again bringing you a Periscope and a Facebook Live simultaneous cast, and we thank you guys for joining us. Please share by swiping and uh, letting others know that this broadcast is happening and ask us questions, give us hearts, let us know what you think and, and ask anything you want. Richard is gonna take us on a little tour. Yes, yes. yes. <clears throat> so um, right now we are where? This is? Well, so I'll, I'll start with where we are in the city of, or near the city of San Antonio. We're actually in Southern Bear County. Okay. So we're about 25 miles south of downtown San Antonio. Okay. And we're here at the, the new SAWS desalination facility. Uh, we're still in construction. We're still doing some testing and everything. That's why we have to wear the beautiful vest yes, and hard hat. hard hat and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but um, we're making a lot of progress, and this plant should be online at, in late October of this year. Perfect. So we wanted to start in this room because um, in our mind, and Richard can cer certainly clarify, this is sort of the heart of the operation. These beautiful white things behind us here are? Yeah, so these are essentially the, the housing for the membrane. So this is the reverse osmosis process right here. So raw water is going to come through our wells, and you're going to have about 10 miles of pipeline. And it starts over there? It does. It starts okay. over there, yeah. So the raw water is going to come into the plant over here. It's going to go through some pre-filters, which is going to take any sand or any grit or anything like that out of the water so it doesn't harm the membranes. And then that water is going to be pressurized and pumped through these membranes here. Um, this right here, the white portion, just some terminology, I guess, this is a vessel. So it's the housing of the membranes. Okay. And within each vessel, we're gonna have seven membranes. They're spiral round. They're about 40 inches long, eight inches in diameter. And for all this area here, we're gonna have over 1,900 membranes. So it's a lot of membranes that you have to, the operators are gonna to have to put in. The good thing is these membranes tend to last five to seven years if you do a good job cleaning them and everything like that, so. Do we have a question? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> sorry. So desalination is basically where you take any type of brackish water or salty water and you treat it with reverse osmosis. So essentially we're taking that water, we're applying a high pressure to it. And once we apply that high pressure, we're forcing it through a membrane and that membrane fil filters it. So essentially once the water goes through there, the clean water comes out, but the bad water stays and it separates the, the two. And most of the time people think about um, salty water as ocean water, right? So, sorry. We're not talking, question, because we're not talking about taking sewage water and making it drink. No, that is correct. We are not talking about that. We're talking about taking water that we're taking from the ground. So this is groundwater that we're using for this desalination process. So this is groundwater very much like the Edwards is groundwater or any of our other aquifers. It's just that this particular water has a high concentration of salt. So we couldn't drink it. It would be safe to drink it the way we can drink Edwards water with minimal treatment. Instead, unlike, um, it's similar to ocean water in that it has salt, but unlike ocean water, the concentration is not as high. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it, just for a relative term. Um, ocean water concentration of salt might be here, 35,000 total dissolved solids. Our brackish water might be here that we're using that we're going to run through this plant, and fresh water is right here. Yeah. So it's closer to the fresh water spectrum than it is to the saline or ocean water spectrum. So that's, what, that's what's happening here. We're certainly um, taking water that there also isn't a lot of competition for. Is that Yeah, so, so for this water source, our wells are 1,500 feet deep, so they're deep. Um, and there's, there's virtually zero competition for this groundwater we're using in this area. Perfect, perfect. So it's a good available resource. So this looks almost finished to me. I mean, it's pretty finished out. What's happening right now? So it's close. Um, a lot of the, the mechanical equipment and everything, it's all set up. Essentially at this point, you know, there's, there's always the cleanups and some additional construction work, but right now they're starting the kind of testing of the equipment. So you can imagine, like, does this valve work, or does this pump work, or does this work? So they're going through and testing and making sure that everything works, everything operates. And one thing you also have to consider is all this is operated from a central control room that we'll look at here in a second. And there's lots of wires and communication for, for the pumps to talk from there to there. So it's a very complicated process, and it takes a lot of testing, and they call it startup. So, startup testing. Yeah. Perfect. 
Do we have any other questions? When are we going to open? I'm sorry? When are we going to open? Oh, so the start, the expected start date that we'll start using Is, the plan. So we're looking close to the end of October of this year. So um, I want you to take us on a tour because okay. it does look really neat. And I've been coming out here and seeing it as it's developed. And I, I get excited because it looks like it's almost finished. Um, and we can show our viewers and you guys can ask us any questions and let us know if there's anything you see that you want to know what it is that we haven't talked about. So we'll let them disengage from the tripod okay. and we'll start walking around. Okay, so we're going out of the process area right now. And we're going into, this is the tour corridor. So when we have visitors or anybody like that who come to see this facility, because it will be open uh, to the public to schedule so tours with SAUCE, uh, they'll be able to um, walk through this area and look into the process area without actually having to be on the floor. There will be. There will be monitors on the wall, and there will be a push button. So essentially, when you push the button, you might learn something about what are the production wells like? Where do we get our raw water for this plant? Or you might go to another one, and you might find out all the details to the process of how the water gets clean. Another one might show you how do you dispose of your waste or brine from the desalination process. And as we just kind of walk down this hall, we'll kind of point out different rooms. In front of us, this is going to be a research facility, and we're going to offer that to the uh, local universities, and they'll be able to take that opportunity to, to do research on our water, find more efficient ways potentially to desalinate water, and uh, that's what that'll be. Sorry. And here we're going to where the entrance to the plant will be. So this is going to be, when everybody comes to visit the plant, the, the uh, starting point. And the theme through this area is going to be the water cycle. And there's still some work to be done as far as the cosmetics that is going to show that. But it's going to be a, a representation of the water cycle. Uh, just a couple things to point out. We have some stone in here. It's sandstone. And some of the reason for the stone is it represents the geology or where we get our water from because the water source that we're getting from is a, a sand aquifer. And over here, this you can kind of take a peek in. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a conference room. So when we have any tours or any visitors, this will be where we, we start out that. There will be a screen at the end of the, uh, the conference room and they'll be able to learn about the process from this plant and other plants we operate down here. And that conference room looks into the research space. It does, yeah. So it has a, a nice window so when people are, after they watch the video, they can see what are the researchers doing and the person giving the tour can talk about, okay, this is what type of stuff they're working on and this is how it can help our utility or it could help other utilities. There will be, and I believe that will be organized through San Antonio Water System. Correct, yeah. So the public can have tours here, schools. Um, we'll be working with the public, and that can be arranged through our offices. So we'll go back into the process area, and we're going to take a quick glance, glimpse at the laboratory and the uh, control room. So right here, I don't know if you can see with the glare, but this is going to be where the uh, laboratory is. This is going to be um, where our, um, our operators are going to do their water quality samples and everything like that. And off to our right right here, this is going to be the control room. One of the neat things about this is uh, we're going to control or operate three water supplies from this control room right here. We're going to operate our existing aquifer storage and recovery facility, uh, which is the ASR. Uh, we're going to operate local Carrizo, which is producing groundwater from the Carrizo aquifer. And then the monitors or the screens you see on the far end, those are going to be what control this desalination facility. 
And that is something that makes this space unique, right? That we have three water sources in one location. Exactly, yeah. So it still zones uh, over 6,000 acres down here in South Bear County, and we're able to, to utilize that land. And, and what's amazing, um, we're not able to see it right now, but if you, if you went outside, all you would see is farmland. We actually take all the land that we've purchased, and we put our well sites and everything, but most of it's leased back to the, to the farmers and the agriculture for agricultural purposes. Well, we'll go out there in a little bit. Yeah. Will we be using deep water here, like in our plumbing? In our plumbing? So it'll actually be the ASR water will be used here. But, but essentially it's all going to be one water because it'll all be mixed. So. so just to point out really quick, so over on this side, Okay, so when this facility is completed, uh, for the first phase, it's going to produce 12 million gallons a day of water. So it's about 5% of our current water supply. And then when all, all phases are built out, it'll be 30 million gallons a day. So that leads into what we're doing yeah, over here, right? Exactly. It's a perfect tie into this. So this right here looks like an empty space. And essentially it is. So this is the footprint for the future phases. So it's a mirror image of what we looked at on the other side. Except when we do the future phases, all we'll have to do is come in with piping, and then we'll have to come in with the actual skids and the vessels and the membranes to do the second and third phase. So we're Do you want to go out front, or what do you yeah, think? Go okay. We can go through the offices too if we want to. So as we walk outside, if we look out into the distance, all this property is owned by Solace. And again, we lease this property back to the landowners and they're able to run their cattle or do agriculture or whatever they want to do out here. And it's tough to see, but out in the distance here, we have our two injection wells and that's where we're going to be getting rid of our brine or our concentrate leftover waste from the RO process. And those wells are about 5,000 feet deep, so they're very deep wells. So I had a question, how much will this aid aquifer usage? I'm not sure what it means, but maybe if you can say the percentage again. So this would, this would help potentially to help augment some of the usage of the Edwards aquifer. So it's one additional supply that helps us diversify from the Edwards, especially in times of drought when we can use this supply. Exactly. So we have, do you know off the top of your head how many water resources we have, how many different water projects? Is it like eight? I feel like it's but seven or eight seven or different eight? water projects. Yes. So each one of those, if you add them up, they make a big impact on the, the water supply. Exactly. And we wanted to kind of show the front of the building. Um, we're a little to the side, but that is the front entrance right here. Is that right? Yeah, so we're looking right now at the front entrance. And they're doing sidewalks and everything. And this whole area will be landscaped. And when we do the landscaping, we were very, uh, we decided, you know, to do drought tolerant plants. So we worked with our conservation department. Uh, they were very helpful to, to come up with what type of plants do we need to plant here that require very minimal water use. And um, so we're super excited when this is done. It's going to be a very nice facility. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's pretty much it, guys. We hope you enjoyed seeing what our desal plant is looking like. It is, as you can see, very looking very finished. It's the finish out phase and the testing phase. Uh, we're very excited to possibly be bringing this at the end of October. And we'll keep you guys updated as new things happen. Thank you for joining us today and uh, have a great day. All right, thank you.